happy Friday, you guys. At least I'm filming this on a Friday. Not sure when you guys are going to be watching it. Ignore the bag of dog food on the chair. Um, if you're new here, my name is Heather and here at Heather's Book Review, as you can take a peek behind me, I like to read and review thrillers. And today's uh, non-spoiler review followed by an entire read with me vloggish kind of video um, is on Alice Feeney's Daisy Darker. If you follow me on Bookstagram, my first copy did get ruined because it was left outside um, in the rain. I wasn't at home to get it. And typically the mailman puts my book of the month packages in um, our mailbox, but it was full because we weren't home. So it got rain damage, but book of the month is freaking amazing and sent me another one for free because they're the best company and they have the best customer support. Um, if you're unfamiliar with book of the month, it is a book buying subscription where you can get a book that typically retails anywhere from like 25 to, um, you know, 35 us dollars and, uh, for 14 99 and then any other, you can choose two other books as add ons like those behind me for 10 bucks. So you can get a little over $30 up to three hardcover books a month. You don't always have to get three books, but I most of the time I feel like do because it's just such a good deal. So I will leave my referral link in the uh, description box below. And then if you go through me, I also get a free book, which is great. Today's alcoholic drink is a mango beer. This was my most anticipated book probably of the year. Um, I freaking love Alice Feeney. Um, like I said, I did film an entire read with me where I broke up this book into five parts. I will leave the uh, part timestamps down below for you if you have this book and you want to read it together or you know, you've know you already read it and you just want to see what I thought. But I did break it up. I just took the total page count and tried to divide it um, equally up into five parts. So uh, this book in the inside flap here um, has a quick mention that it is similar to Agatha Christie's And Then There Were None, which is like my OG favorite thriller of all time. So I knew I was like absolutely going to love the setting of this book and I did. It's just like, this is the perfect cover for it. It's like a secluded large house on like this cliff and you're surrounded by water and when the tide comes in you're kind of stuck and it's basically this dysfunctional family stuck in this house and they're just like all this drama is happening and oh gosh it is so good on my rating scale I am giving this a go get this book now I don't care if you go through book of the month I don't care if you just get it on Amazon I'll link that for you below as well but like guys. It is, it's good. It is good. It is great. I will say if you watched my rock, paper, scissors, uh, review, I will link that up here as well. I was able to call a huge twist in that book on like page 30. This book, I was also able to call a massive twist. I don't know how I keep getting so lucky. Um, but you can watch the footage, the read with me footage, but I do believe I figured out this massive twist, like around page 70 maybe I don't know it was pretty early on and that twist ended up being right however there's so much more of the book that like I did predict wrong so I loved that so like overall I would say this book is like a four and a half stars for me which is really high the only reason I didn't give it the five was because like I was able to predict that piece and while it's fun to still read the book. Like the book is so much fun for me. It's just like, I love when I am stumped on like all accounts, if you know what I mean. So, um, but yeah, it's good. It's probably my second favorite. No, 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 no. Actually, no. My first favorite is his and hers. Oh God, that is such an amazing thriller. I'll link that down below as well. And I love, I know who you are. I have a full review for that. That book there are some people who are like this, it's too much. It's like too much of a thrill, like too, not too much of a thriller, too disturbing. And it is disturbing, but like, I don't know. I read thrillers all the time. So for me, like I'm used to the disturbing stuff. And I think that is like one of her best thrillers. But anyways, this one is up there. It is like top tier. It is so freaking good. I had so much fun chatting with my pals on Bookstagram who were also reading this and who were like trying to predict things like, oh, it is. It is so, so, so much fun to read. I'm parched.
That being said, I highly recommend this book. I don't want to say too much about it other than the like dysfunctional family that's all kind of trapped in this stony cliff and it's got like and then there were none vibes, okay? It's good. You should read it. If you want to read it with me, stay tuned for the uh, read with me footage, you know, look at the parts and how I broke it up and just click on that timestamp anytime you want to see my thoughts. Um, but yeah, guys, it is, it's amazing. I highly recommend it. If you, uh, want to let me know what you thought about it, please indicate if your comment contains spoilers so we don't ruin it for any of our other bookish friends. But yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and get started with the read with me. So have fun. I have to show you guys my notes. All of this writing in pink pen. That's all my thoughts on Daisy Darker so far. So at this point in time, I have read parts one and two, but for the sake of this video, because I said I was gonna do five parts, I am still going to film it in five parts. I just finished part one last night and I was like so tired and I could not bring myself to come sit here and film. Also, I do wanna preface this a little bit with at this point in time, I am feeling a little under the weather. Our little one uh, recently went back to daycare because I'm a teacher and we start again next week when I'm filming this. Um, so yeah, my if I sound a little congested or whatever, it's definitely because I am. Guys, I have so many thoughts. So right now in part one of this video, Daisy Darker, these are my thoughts on parts uh, or pages one through 64. So I'm going to be referencing my handy notes a lot during this. But so far, we find out she's only supposed to live until she's like 15. She's got this rare heart condition. She also hints a lot about like not being loved by her family, which I feel like when they all come together at Sea Glass, we definitely get those vibes. So I feel really sad for her because I'm like, gosh, like her family just seems so like odd anyways and you know if we are going to get past and present point of views of her childhood like I wonder what they're gonna look like. I was also really intrigued about the note from the author's agent at the beginning of the book like when I first read it I was like is this like actually a note from Alice Feeney's agent? I just put on a little chapstick slash lip gloss whatever it is because I noticed my lips are so chapped. A nervous habit of mine is when I'm stressed, I bite my lips and I'm really, really stressed about returning to work. But anyways, I was really intrigued by that excerpt um, from the author's agent because it insinuates that like somebody drops off a manuscript of the author who's dead. So I'm like, okay, is someone from the family gonna like find a manuscript and like drop it off? that used to be the grandmas or something, but but yeah, so I've just been thinking about that a lot. Then we get around to chapter two and I was like, I didn't know if we were reading Daisy's point of view because at first it like, it never says Daisy, like the grandma's just like, oh, like come in or whatever, but she never says like, hi Daisy or anything. So then I was like, okay, is it one of the other sisters? But then it was later confirmed that no, it was, it's definitely supposed to be Daisy's point of view. Um, loving the like secluded sea kind of like setting and vibe. Like that is totally like the whole stormy setting. Like they can't go out for eight hours or something because of the tide. Like I love that kind of stuff for sure. Um, you guys know I never read the inside flap of my books ever. I like to go into it not knowing anything. However, I will say like I knew that this was supposed to be like a note, if you will, to um, and then there were none. So like I've kind of had that like in the back of my head, hoping that it wasn't a spoiler, but I don't think it possibly could be because after I was talking about it with a friend, she's like, yeah, it literally says it right here. Um, in the inside flap of the book. So if it really was a spoiler, I don't think Feeny would include it. And then around this like part, chapter two, between chapters like three and four, I was like, what if this manuscript that's mentioned at the beginning of the book is actually hidden in one of the clocks? And that's why those weird like 80 something clocks uh, keep getting brought up. Cause I'm like, there's something, something is going on with those clocks. So we're getting bits and pieces of Daisy's family, right? And I have some notes here on Nancy. 
The fact that the kids never met her side of the family ever leads me to believe that she either had a terrible childhood, a terrible past, and wants to just like protect her family from her own family, or something shady happened and she like ran from them. I don't really know, but that seems like a bit much. Um, and then also, okay, so like while this book is giving me knives out kind of vibes, it's also giving me like dark kind of like like dark sadistic humor kind of vibes in the sense of like have you guys ever seen um we've always lived in the castle or whatever like you know how that book while it wasn't humorous it was filmed with like very like dark like kind of muted colors very gray like undertones and like creepy vibe if this book was a movie, I'm imagining like everything is like besides the grandmother and like Trixie's wardrobes of like the bright pinks and purples. I'm imagining like it being filmed really like just like in that mysterious kind of like dark tone, spooky kind of vibes. But also like that scene when they're all sitting at the dinner table and they're talking about like how they would murder someone. And then the grandma just claps at the end and is like, okay, like, wow, we're such a murderous family or whatever. I was like, this is kind of like weird, like dark humor. I have a note on here that says, Lily is just going to treat Trixie like that and no one says anything. Lily literally is a sorry excuse for a mother. She treats Trixie so poorly and like no one says anything. It drives me nuts. Um, so then I just wrote down some notes here of like what everyone is supposed to receive from the will. Um, and it sounds obviously like Trixie got the better end of the stick in their point of view of like always, um, or of getting the house. Sorry, I'm like reading as I'm trying to talk. So Trixie gets like basically what everybody wants. And then Daisy keeps like bringing up like something that she did that like upset her family. And I'm just wondering what that possibly could have been. The one prediction I have on here is we are introduced to Connor and I feel like it has something to do with Connor. Like maybe she like made his dad upset and then his dad like took out, like, I don't know, abused Connor in a sense. Like it feels like Daisy is holding in this like guilt of something that she did, but I can't quite predict what that could possibly be. And then what a place to end in this part one. Like if you're new here and this is your first read with me, the way that I pace out the books is I take the final page count in this sense it was around like 330 and then I divide it into parts so I wanted to do this book in five parts similar to how I did um the house across the lake by Riley Sager and what a place to end just like randomly the grandma ends up dying and then there's that like massive poem on the wall and I'm thinking like do we read into the poem is it gonna give us clues like I don't know so basically at this point in the book I am like extremely intrigued I feel like the family is really weird and like kind of shitty and I'm just excited to see where it goes so part two is pages 65 and we read through 121 so I will be back with my thoughts all right guys like I said I've already read through part two um and I have many many more thoughts so basically um I'm at this point in time, I'm like, okay, who could, who has like the most motive to kill the grandma? So to me, it's like Trixie was found at the scene of the crime, right? But I feel like she also has the like least motive out of them all because she's getting the house. If anything, Lily seems to be the one that's like the most like vengeful, but I still don't have like I still don't have that one person. I'm thinking it might be like multiple people at this point who are like kind of in on something. I'm not quite sure. Um, I did also take a note that Connor had chalk on his pants and he kind of like wiped it away. So I'm wondering like, why would he have chalk? Cause it's not like he rubbed himself up against the wall. Like he had that chalk either because he wrote it or maybe like if we're doing that and then there were none but and then there were none vibes and the grandma like got up. Maybe she like passed him the chalk or something for like part two or three of her plan. I don't know, but I'm keeping it in my head. Like Connor had the chalk on him and that was brought up for a reason. I also made a note that the dog Poppins, I think, a cute name. She growled at Lily and then she growled at Frank. And like 
I, I have a an lane switch. I have a best friend in real life that's also a vet and she's just like amazing with dogs. But I'm also thinking like, is Rose, because Rose is a vet, like does she just have, you know, that like, the vibe that the dog knows that Rose is a good person or is it a mix of that and like Lily and Frank are like up to something and the dog knows it and like maybe saw them harm the grandma I don't know also where did all those movies go because when Daisy was looking in the library or whatever the heck it was she noticed that like all the books were gone or no sorry all of the VHS tapes that the grandma had laid out were gone and then um replaced with like books or something. So I'm like, okay, so not only did somebody move the body unless it was the grandma the whole time who just got up and walked away, but they also had time to like pack up all those movies. Then we know multiple people left and could have like done something. Like Connor went to get firewood, flipping the notes. Nancy went to make tea. Lily went to get sweaters and uh, what was the last one? Now I can't remember. Okay, this is where shit gets real. Right now, right in this moment, buckle up your seatbelt. I literally wrote right here. I feel like Daisy has barely spoken this entire book. Let that sink in for a second. Think about it, think about it. Now, after I wrote that, I said to myself, Wait, I feel like she also hasn't been spoken to the entire book. And then I sat there for a good 15 minutes and went back through the book, right? I went back through the whole freaking book and I'm looking for dialogue. And the only time that Daisy, I literally have goosebumps saying this because I like really feel like I'm on to something. The only time that Daisy has been spoken to is by Trixie. Trixie came in and she said, Hey, Aunt Daisy. Then flash forward a little bit. There was a scene of like where she was supposedly playing Scrabble with Daisy. And Lily comes over and she's like, come on. Like, you know, like in her like grouchy mood, like we're going to eat dinner. And then Daisy's like, or Trixie's like, we're not done yet. And she flips the board. I'm thinking Daisy's dead. At this point in the book, I am thinking, look at my last notes. Daisy is dead. Ignore the chicken scratch because I was just like, so I was in like this crazy state when I was like, oh my gosh, I just figured out something huge. I think Daisy's dead. I think that Trixie might be able to see ghosts or something and she can see Daisy's ghost. And obviously from what's going on, Daisy thinks that she herself is alive. She keeps trying to talk to Connor, but look back, you guys. Every time she's trying to talk to Connor, he's not replying. Then there's that scene when they're supposedly in the room together and she's like, hey, can we talk? He doesn't respond because she's not there. Guys, I, I have a feeling. This is gonna be hilarious to watch if like it's wrong, but I just have a feeling. And this is what I love about Alice Feeney's books. Like, oh, they're just so good. But she types boo on his laptop, remember, right? And then he like turns around, probably because that's freaking weird, like, and super ghostly. But he doesn't say anything. And then there's that scene in the kitchen when she's like, listen, can we just talk? Like, I'm really scared. Doesn't respond. Then I looked again. And there's a scene when I don't, the mom says something. And then Daisy's like, why would you say that? And then right after it, it says, my mom ignored me. Again, because she's not there. Nobody talked to her at the dinner table. The only thing I noticed was, like, I literally have goosebumps. I don't know if this is gonna, can you guys see? This happens when I get, like, when I feel like I'm onto something. Or, like, just get excited, like, oh my gosh. Um, What was I saying? Sorry, I know my thoughts are all jumbled. When they're all at the dinner table and they're like, Connor, you're gonna sleep in Daisy's room unless that's, to dot, 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 what were they gonna say? Too weird, too much, because Daisy's dead. And then Lily or Rose said something like, oh, I'm sure Connor remembers everything about Daisy, past tense. Then, had to take a little breath there. Then the grandma also talked about Daisy in the past tense. She said, um, Daisy's the only one that never asked me for money past tense. So I firmly believe as of right now, we are entering chapter 17. 
that Daisy's dead. So I'm going to go into the whole book thinking this, that she's dead. I'm going to play out the interactions. But yeah, as of right now, the only like actual interactions she's had are with Trixie. And I think that, you know, Lily's always on Trixie saying she's an odd bird. She's weird. Why can't I just have had a cheerleader daughter or whatever the heck she's been spewing? So that's my prediction right now, you guys. But I will say that's only like one piece of the book. It doesn't tie into like who's doing the murders. So we'll have to see. I don't, I don't know. I feel like it would be kind of weird if the grandma was like dead the whole time. I mean, it feels like she is trying to teach the family like a lesson or like multiple lessons, but yeah. So I'm excited. I really think I'm right here. I'm so excited to film the rest of these as I continue to read because it's going to be so freaking hilarious. Like if I'm wrong, because I'm so like, I don't know. I have so much, I put so much energy into this theory. So anyways, what did I write down for part three? We are reading through 121 to 182 now. Hey guys, here with uh, my thoughts on part three which I wrote down was pages 121 to 182. So a little over 60 pages. And then that brought us right up to almost starting chapter 25. So just showing you my notes again, I took an entire front and back page for part three. And there are my notes for part four. Um, but yeah, a lot to chat about. So as you guys know, showed you my goosebumps on my arm earlier. I am 1000% convinced that Daisy is a ghost. And that has only been like further confirmed in part three. So that led me to believe like, you know how it says that Daisy has this big secret kind of thing. I'm wondering like, is her secret that she's dead? But then I'm like, okay, her, the way that like she talks about everything like through all the scenes makes it think that like she doesn't understand that she's dead kind of like some sixth sense shit so like I don't really know but um I was writing down page numbers where like my theory was further confirmed so on page 123 Lily says something um and then it oh it was you know what she had said Lily was like I wish I could have been nicer or like I should have been nicer or something after they were watching the home video. And then it says, she doesn't look me in the eye when she says it. Well, because Daisy's not there, it's her ghost, right? Um, and then they're like all talking about um, the one uh, movie at home movie where someone put the Scrabble letters that said, hear me. And then they're all like going back and forth. And in the book, Daisy's like, we should play it. But then it says like they're going, they're all weighing the pros and cons of playing it. But I wrote down like, of course they're gonna be doing that, right? Like they're all gonna be like, should we play it? Should we not? Like, is this like, this? we're basically playing into like what the murderer wants us to do. But like, this is just such a great example of how Feeny like deceives her readers, right? Um, what else? The scene of Daisy getting that like scenery toy that her dad gave her. And he was like, I feel so bad that like you don't get to go out and experience this. That did make, that made me tear up a little bit. And then when Rose uh, gave her gift of the stars and put it on the ceiling for Daisy, that was like, seriously, like really just so sweet. Um, then when Trixie disappeared for a little bit, I was thinking like, what if Trixie knew um, that like she was going to get drugged. So she like pretended that she was asleep and then got up and like moved on her own. But I don't think that theory is accurate because, you know, she basically was injected, uh, over injected with all of that insulin. Okay. So if you grab your books right now, if you have it with you, if you don't, don't worry, I'll read it for you. But if we go back to page 143, it's the family poem again. Okay, and then I made a note of the first two lines. It says, Daisy Darker's family were as dark as dark can be. When one of them died, all of them lied and pretended not to see. So again, Feeney being the master of deception, that in my opinion is in reference to when Daisy died. But 
if you are reading this and haven't predicted that Daisy's dead yet, you're just led to believe that that's most likely, you know, about the dad or no, about Nana since she was the first one to have died, right? So yes, I wrote that down. I was like, oh my gosh. Also something else, Connor isn't part of the family like blood wise, but he definitely feels like it, right? And I noticed he's not in the poem. So that just like leads me to wonder sometimes. Then if you have your books, again, if not, don't worry. On page 148, if you go back and look at that wardrobe scene where Poppins is just hanging out in the wardrobe, um, Daisy is also, she says something, but she's not, um, she says, it wasn't me, I say. There's no sign of Trixie in the other bedrooms, Connor says, appearing in the gloomy doorway. He held up his hand to shield his eyes with Rosie, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, they just ignore Daisy. They ignore Daisy. So because Daisy's saying that to Rosie, or, or I'm sorry, Rose, um, again, you're, lead, you're led to believe that Daisy's actually there, but she's not. It's just Pruther, Pruther. <laughs> it's further proof. Oh my gosh, I was thinking further proof. It's like, I think too quick and like, I can't say what I'm thinking fast enough. And then it just like makes hilarious words. On page 152, I had further evidence that proves my theory because they're all talking about something. Let me flip back. I can't remember what, um, but it sounds like Daisy, um, hold on, wait, let me just see. Oh, it's about poems. So what is Connor saying? He says, I think Rose might be right. What if someone in the family wanted to find Nana's last book to stop anyone from publishing it? Says Connor, I think someone should stop playing detective, Lily said. Connor, Nana was always hiding secret meanings in the poem she wrote. They were never really just for children. Then it's ellipses here, he pauses. What if someone had secrets they didn't want shared? I say agreeing with him. Okay, so it sounds like she's agreeing with him. Secrets worth killing to keep, Connor adds, and that's why they killed her. But flashback, he literally just says, Nana was always hiding secret meaning. So he's just adding on to himself, like his own conversation. You know, but he paused in between those two sentences and then Feeney again Master of Deception puts that line in here, making it sound like Daisy's like adding on to what he's saying, but in reality, he's just adding on to himself. Okay, now we're here for my prediction. So taking a little step away from my whole theory that Daisy's dead, my prediction is that Rose is behind all of this and let me read you my notes why. So basically, Poppins likes Rose and typically when dogs like you, they follow you, right? So it would make sense for Rose to hide Poppins in the wardrobe because she wouldn't want Poppins following her around, giving her away, like if she's doing her dirty deeds or whatever she's up to. And then that also explains how she knew where to look for Poppins because when Daisy had like heard something in the wardrobe she said that she saw two sets of eyes but she didn't say she heard anything like other than the wardrobe moving like there wasn't a dog barking or anything so how the heck would rose have known where to look for poppins unless she put her there herself there was also that scene when um like the grandma had died and they were like what's gonna happen with poppins and then like automatically rose was like well she's gonna go with me and then even Daisy was like, it seemed like she knew what to say, like she had already thought that through. Um, then this is interesting. Rose's part in the poem like alludes to her dying alone, but not like it doesn't give away how she's going to die. Like in the poem, it sounds like Lily's going to be shot, right? with that gun. But for Rose's, it just says that like, she's gonna die alone. And I'm like, I'm wondering if she's orchestrating all of this, killing her family, cause she can't stand them, whatever. And then she knows that they're all gonna be gone once she's through with everything and she's gonna die alone. Then there's that scene when she looked a little suspicious, like finding the insulin. She's like, oh, I found this under Nancy's bed. Keep in mind, Nancy has been gone all of part three, so I don't really know what to make of that yet. I kind of think she's just dead somewhere and they haven't found her. 
but she, she's like, oh, I found this. It was under Nancy's bed. Was it really though? And then wasn't there something else with the insulin? Oh yeah, when they were all at the table, Rose was the one to say, um, what did I write here? Shoving the insulin between the toes to kill somebody and that's what like had happened to Trixie. On page 171, I wrote that our girl Daisy was ignored again. Um, okay, yep, right here at the top. Maybe we shouldn't have this conversation in front of Trixie, but Lily ignores me. My sister is always a stranger to any point I make. Okay, further proof to me that Daisy is dead. Okay, then there's that scene when Nancy has the handkerchief and there's a B on it. Daisy knows, notices that there's a B. We find out that Kent, uh, Mr. Kennedy, Connor's dad's first name was Bradley. And then also Nana's first name was Beatrice. So the handkerchief was either Bradley's or Beatrice, I think. But I don't really know if there's even any significance behind the handkerchief. Then it goes on to say, this is just a little thought. It goes on to say that Bradley, like, you know turned his life around or whatever but for me as sad as this is to like even think of and say like that doesn't mean that just because he has a job and like you know good hygiene now doesn't mean that he can't be like a closet abuser and my last thought on this part three is my prediction like i said i'm leaning towards rose or connor still i haven't like given up that theory that it could be connor or it could be Rose and Connor together. Um, and then obviously that cupboard scene of them finding Nana and Trixie and Frank was really disturbing. And it also leads me to think like, was that symbolic in a sense? Um, also, side note, Rose spotted the cupboard key on the dog. Was it because she put it there? And did Rose put the bodies in the cupboard to symbolize like how Lily was so fucked up and locked Daisy in the cupboard with the rat when she was little. Like, I don't know. I'm just kind of wondering like why the cupboard, like why was that thrown in there? I can't really think, but I can't really think of anything other than like possibly have, uh, it was, it, it was because it's supposed to be symbolic. Sorry. Um, okay. So now we're going to read part four, which starts on page 183 and goes to 246. So yeah. Also side note, uh, my husband and I are going out to dinner tonight with some friends. So I'm gonna have to throw some like dry shampoo in here or something because your girl, you know what? I washed this hair and styled it yesterday and it like, it just, it needs dry shampoo like the day after. Like, I don't know. I've always been so envious of the girls that can like go like three, four, five days without washing their hair. Like, nah, -uh. not for me looking a little bit more human because I put on <laughs> some makeup because uh, my husband and I are going to go out to dinner with some friends. And if you're curious how I've basically been able to read this entire book in a day, it's because our little one is spending some time with some of our family today. So hence why I've had this uh, gift of time to read. But I have to make these thoughts on part four pretty quick. Sorry, I'm like lotioning my hands. I didn't realize how dry they are. Um, but yes, okay, just finished part four, which was getting the handy dandy notebook here. 182 to 246. All right, so guys, I feel like it's so obvious in this part that um, Daisy is a ghost at this point. Like on page 192, I wrote that Daisy speaks, but it's a coincidence with how Rose uh, replies. There must have been something, I think I remember it vaguely being like, I said this and then Rose said something and it said, Rose agrees. Let me find it. Let me find it. Here we go. Middle of 192. I think we're all very upset and very tired, but maybe we could try to be a little bit kinder to each other, I say. And it seems to do the trick, Rose. I'm sorry, says Rose. I know you're scared, Lily. We all are, but the situation must be even more terrifying after what happened to Trixie. It just said Rose agrees, but I think that, you know, it just was a chance of time. And this whole day I've been telling my husband, like, I know the main character of this book is dead. I know he's a ghost. He's like, plot twist. What if the whole time you're reading this, you're supposed to think she's dead, but she's really not, but... No, I know, I know 
that she's a ghost. So then Rose and Connor are talking about like the least least likely person is most likely the person to cause a murder or something. And she says to Connor, you don't think Daisy dot, dot, dot. And before that she could even finish, Connor was like, no, absolutely not. So I wrote in my notes, I was like, what was she going to say? Like, do you think Daisy didn't really die? Do you think that Daisy has been alive all along? Do you think Daisy is haunting us? Like, I wish she could have finished that sentence, right? Um, but again, we're made to think that they're talking about Daisy in the present tense, but we all know now that she's a ghost and it's the past tense. How ironic was that part that Daisy turned into a ghost, uh, during that, uh, one of the kids plays for the, I think it may have been Lily's birthday. Um, and then then I really recognize like all of the videos so far have all been about Daisy for the most part. Like Rose putting that dead baby mouse, which was gross, but I don't think it had any significance. Basically them filming Daisy drowning and then the video of Daisy in the play, but then becoming a ghost and then them dumping the water on her. And I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, what are the common themes in these videos. One, that Daisy is neglected. Two, there could be like an intent of harm on Lily's, uh, or intent to harm on Lily's perspective, right? Like she, she is just so mean. Like she's just a mean person and she really didn't care what happened to Lily. Like she was, or sorry, Daisy. She was like throwing the cold water on her. You know, she basically was like filming her drowning. Um, and then I was like cracking up because this family like totally has a thing for sleeping tablets, right? Like when it said that Daisy put a sleeping tablet in Lily's drink so she could cut off her hair. I was like, okay, why does this family have such easy access to sleeping tablets? No wine today, but I do have a glass of champagne, a little pre-dinner drink. So at this point, Daisy is just getting vengeful, right? She's trying to plot the sisters to not like each other. Um, with the scissors. She's cutting up the dress. She's cutting off Lily's hair. Um, okay, backside of the notes. I really have to hurry because we're leaving soon and I have to change. Um, let's see. Something I haven't thought about but that clicked to me in part four was, is Trixie's dad, whomever he is, is he important to the story or not? Like, I don't think there's another person at Sea Glass. I truthfully believe it's one of these four people. Um, but, like, if her dad is important to the story or, like, a piece, like, could it be him that's doing all this? But I don't know. That seems like a little bit of a stretch. I think that Rose, she, first off, she was the only one to leave the room when they were all like, let's lock each other in here for safety. She's the only one to have left. And then she's the one to plant the seed of like, I think somebody else is on the island, but mm -mm, I'm still thinking it's Rose. She also seems to be the first person that pronounces everybody dead. And what was my other one? Um, Daisy had said like, nobody said anything, but when she entered the room, like it was obvious that she was gone longer than just a few minutes. So like, I think that Nancy was dead for quite some time. And then when Rose left the room, she was moving Nancy's body to the garden and like putting the bouquet in her hand and all that stuff. That's my theory. I do think that like I noticed Trixie's part in the poem was still crossed off. So whoever injected that insulin, I do think was hoping that Trixie would die. So then part of me was like, did Rose have a change of heart and like want to keep um, Trixie alive or another thing that I was thinking is like, is Trixie behind all of this? She injected herself. Uh, I don't know. What else did I write on here about Trixie? Um, yeah, like, could it have been her all along? Did she inject herself? I don't know. Now that I'm like saying this out loud, it's just kind of like, okay, she could have injected herself, but how did she know that like that wasn't absolutely going to kill her. So no, no, I'm still thinking Rose. I'm still thinking Rose. What's interesting is Daisy noticed that Nana's agent is a he and his card was still in the clock from yesterday. 
So then I'm thinking, is Connor the agent? Because he did like journalism, right? Like he's a good writer, so he could have been behind these poems and everything, but I don't know you guys. Are we also supposed to think that Connor's dad is back and doing all this? And like, were the muddy footprints his? Like, I don't know, that also seems like a little bit of a stretch because he didn't, he did not strike me as the poetic type. So like, I don't think behind, I don't think he's behind the poems and stuff. So I don't know guys, but I will most likely finish part five, which is page 247 to finish um, tomorrow. But look at, we only have that little, little bit left. But yeah, gosh, it's good. I'm loving it so far. And like, I just, I'm excited to see how everything wraps up. So yeah, let's just go ahead and finish the book. Hey guys, I am here with my final thoughts on part five of Daisy Darker. We have officially finished the book if you are watching this point. So this is gonna wrap up like my all of my final thoughts. And sorry, our son is sleeping and when he's sleeping, I tend to talk a little bit more quietly. So you may have to turn up your volume a little bit. But so my one of my thoughts when we first got to this last part of the book, I was really starting to second guess myself a little bit about Daisy's um, condition. I was like, we've been led to believe that she has this sort of like heart condition, but what if it's something else? Like, what if it wasn't a heart condition? I don't really know. I'm, I'm reading back my notes and I'm not quite clear like what my exact thoughts were on this. I wrote down like, what if the scar in her chest was from like, like a physical like defect that she was born from or born with um and not like internally i don't know if i'm like even wording this correctly but anyways it ended up being the heart but that was just like a random thought that i had had i feel like the agent was a little bit of like a red herring right like the whole time i'm like did nana end up having another son like who is this agent who is this agent that they keep on referencing and then we never found out so I don't know about you guys, but for a while I was genuinely thinking like maybe the agent was still in the house because it said his time card was punched in or I don't know. Am I missing something completely about the agent? I have no idea, but it's like we never found out who he was. So if you've been watching this whole read with me footage, then you know, in I think part four, I did have that like little like inkling I like couldn't figure out like what word I was trying to remember inkling that it was Trixie but then the whole like insulin situation kind of threw me off because I was like how could she have done the insulin but then like not injected enough to like revive herself like it didn't occur to me that it was two people working together um but yeah I was really pleasantly surprised that it was Trixie and not Rose because I feel like since I did figure out that Daisy was a ghost so early on, I think I then also would have been like pretty ups like kind of upset if it was also Rose that was like behind everything because then I probably would have felt like I had figured out like most of the book and I do like to have some surprises. Trixie's dad obviously did end up being important to the story um being Connor. So, yeah, I mean definitely like a really huge part of the story. I know I said this before in the non-spoiler part of the review, but like I cannot believe that this is my second Feeny book in a row where I have called the twist so early on. I think I just get so hyped up whenever she comes out with a book and then I sit there and I like try to figure out all the other possibilities and I don't know if I quite do that with other like thrillers just because I don't know, like I'm so invested when I read one of her books because I know it's going to be good and like maybe I don't try as hard with other books or maybe I'm just able to guess some of her twi twists as of late. <laughs> I don't really know, but yeah, overall, like I said, it's still a four and a half star for me. I freaking loved the book. And yeah, that about wraps up my thoughts. I am like one and a half hours away from finishing The Family Remains by Lisa Jewell. So that's probably gonna be my next 
book review um in terms of like a whole solid review i didn't do a read with me because i'm listening to that on audible as always my friends thank you so much for being here thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye you guys